I had an affair with a married woman that has ruined my life, and I don't know what to do anymore. I am partially making this post to get things off my chest. And partially because I need advice. It's extremely long. So I apologize in advance. But it's a rather involved story. Some time ago I was in a relationship with an emotionally manipulative girlfriend. Looking back on it. She was most likely manic she was often the sweetest person. But when she wasn't. She would yell and scream and treat me like crap. There were a lot of reasons for this that allowed me to internally justify her behavior. But I'd prefer not to give too many details to avoid doxing honestly anyone who already knows will definitely recognize me from the story anyways. But I don't care anymore. I had just moved to a new city to start a new job. And knew absolutely no one. This was when I met. Let's call her Taylor. She was kind and sweet and eventually I began sharing some of the less pleasant details of my relationship with her. We began spending a lot of time together. And she also shared details of her marriage with me that she was unhappy. Unfulfilled. And looking for a way out. That she no longer loved him. It never occurred to me that she refrained from speaking to his character. Or why she was unhappy. She just was. And I accepted it. One night. After a particularly bad fight with my girlfriend. I was in a very bad place. Taylor stopped by to make sure I was okay. One thing led to another. And the affair began. She was kind. Sweet. Caring. Everything a partner should be. I began to look forward to and cherish the moments we would spend together and started to fall for her. More importantly. She also fell for me. She confessed that she loved me and she was going to leave her husband. Then I met her husband. As it turns out. He wasn't the man as she described him, he was a genuinely good person. And I found myself wanting to be friends with him. But I couldn't bear to look him in the eye. The self-hatred grew like a mountain. And the guilt ate me alive. I would wake up at odd hours of the morning. Unable to sleep. And would pound pavement until my feet were bleeding and I couldn't walk. I lost probably 20 pounds in a month. And I am not a heavy guy. I became a neurotic. Anxiety-ridden mess. I hated myself. And what I had done. Eventually this emotional state began impacting my relationships, and they both fell apart. First the affair. After I began acting cold and distant. And eventually after about a year my relationship with my manipulative ex although that was. Of course. For the best. Taylor begged me to take the secret of our affair to the grave. And I agreed. But the guilt was insurmountable. I began self-medicating to cope with my guilt and ever-present anxiety and neurosis. I retreated from social life. Spending more time alone. This led me to spiral further into self-hatred. And eventually hit rock bottom when I attempted suicide by running a hose from my car exhaust. A cop found me on the side of the road. I was briefly committed but. Released. Unnoticed by everyone in my life. I promised myself I would try to be a better person. To do the right thing with the second chance I had been given. For a time. Things continued as normal. Well. As normal as they could be. Given the circumstances. I still spent time with Taylor as we had mutual friends. But I still felt the mountain of guilt inside me. And while the love had long since faded it would be a lie to say there weren't still emotions there for both of us. Several months ago a large group of us went on a day trip. This trip involved lots of alcohol. And I was heavily inebriated as was Taylor and everyone else. I had just begun talking to someone else. Let's call her Ashley. At one point that I do not remember. Taylor apparently approached me and kissed me in public. Somehow this did not have a significant impact or fallout on anyone present presumably because everyone was too drunk to remember except Ashley. It took her some time. But eventually she asked me if there had ever been anything between Taylor and I and I confessed. Well. Not all of it. Admittedly. But some of it. A part of me still wanted to protect Taylor's marriage for her. Recently there was another party with alcohol involved. This time I was smart enough to watch my intake. But neither Taylor nor Ashley were. At one point. When I left Ashley to go get a drink. Taylor made another pass at me. Attempting to wrap her arms around me and maybe more. If I had allowed it. 
I rejected the advance. I don't want to give too many details of what happened next. As it is rather specific. But it can best be summed up as Taylor acting in a way to attempt to make me as jealous as possible in fact. She even vocalized it as much. This confirmed to me something I had already known for a long time she would never stop. She would always try. And keep me on the side. And her husband needed to know the truth. The very next day I told Taylor I was going to come clean. That my ex. As emotionally manipulative as she might have been. Deserved to know the truth. As did her husband. I knew what this meant I had no delusions that Taylor would hate me for the rest of my life. And likely never talk to me again. I told Taylor she could tell her husband when and how she wanted. So long as it was soon. As I felt she deserved that right. I told her to let me know when it was done. Because I knew my ex would sing it from the rooftops when she found out as she was the villain in our breakup and it would give her moral high ground which meant as soon as I told her then Taylor's husband would soon know as well. I should have known what would happen next. It's a tale as old as time. Isn't it? Taylor told her husband. All right. But of course she didn't tell him the truth. She told him that she was in a dark place and that I took advantage of her emotional state. She told him that the only reason she was coming clean was because I professed my love to her and that I thought if I forced her hand she would leave him for me. But that she loved him and would never leave him at least that much was true. As I genuinely believe she loves him. Despite her many flaws. After coming clean to him she immediately called both Ashley and my ex to ensure that her version would be the first version they heard. Not knowing I had already confessed to Ashley. In fact. Since Ashley was an eyewitness to and could corroborate my version of events. She would have known Taylor was lying even if I hadn't confessed. Taylor then called as many relevant parties as possible and did the same. Within 24 hours I had lost basically every friend that I had. Despite my attempts. Not a single person except Ashley will answer my calls or texts. My entire support network. Gone because I grew a conscience. It's been almost a week since then. I've maybe gotten three or four hours of sleep a night. Tops. I've thrown up daily. Barely been able to keep food down. I've lost probably 15 pounds. The suicidal thoughts have returned and I am terrified for my own sanity. Ashley has actually been amazingly supportive. Having been in an emotionally manipulative relationship herself and understanding how that can drive someone to the brink. But still. I really don't deserve her. So. That's the story. Or at least. My version of the truth. I suppose. All stories have two sides. So my question is this. Should I tell her husband that she's still lying to him? If you were him. Would you want to? Hear it. More importantly. Would you even believe it? Or should I disappear? Accepting my role as the villain in the story and allow her to hang the weight of the affair around my neck to try and save her marriage. I am genuinely trying to do the right thing and be a better person. But I don't know what the right thing to do is anymore. If you actually took the time to read this. Thank you. Even if you don't know what I should do. The fact that you read it is enough. Typing this all out was a great weight off my chest. Get a new social circle. Those friends suck if they're not willing to hear your side as well. This isn't the end of your life. It hasn't ruined your life. Taylor on the other hand her shit is messed up. But you were not married. That's on her. I'd say. Cry it out. Get on up and over it. You made a crappy mistake. Do not do it again. Stay away from married women. And find new friends FFS. Oh trust me. I learned my lesson. It's easily the biggest duck up of my life and I would do anything to take it back. I never thought I'd be the type of person to chat. But Ashley summed it up best to me. During my confession to her. Anyone can cheat on their partner if the circumstances of their current relationship are bad enough. No matter how virtuous you may think you are and I hardly thought I was virtuous. And yeah. Definitely finding new friends. Not like I have much of a choice in that matters anyways. To be fair. Second story. Looking for advice. How do you make big compromises in a marriage when both of you want something wildly different? As with most things I could go very in depth into the backstory but I will try to keep this as concise as possible. 
Too Long didn't read how to compromise on big decisions when you both want wildly different things. So a girl 19 that I 21 dated in high school, and I got back together a few months ago. We broke up for a couple years because I was joining the army, and she was a junior in high school. Still wanting to enjoy the things that your average 17-year-old wants to do. Prom. Homecoming. Etc. I never really got over her for the two years we were apart, and she didn't either. We rekindled and all seemed well until we started planning our future. Right now we are long distance and she is working 30 hours a week plus a full course load at college and it's been a strain on us. We don't talk as much and I miss my partner. It doesn't help that I am approaching a very major decision point in my life that will impact us both a lot and we need to have a long conversation about it. We have had snippets of it over the phone but not what we really need to have. She wants to get married and for me to re-enlist because she doesn't want to be stuck at home and I want to get married and come back home because I miss my family and I want to start going to school. Part of the reason that this is becoming an argument is because we are at vastly different places in life right now. She is about to get her bachelor's degree next year and hasn't left the small town we grew up in for both of our whole lives and wants to see the world. I on the other hand have been away from home for three years and I am tired of not seeing my family. I am tired of coming home and seeing how tall my nieces have gotten and missing out on them growing up. My mother's family business is floundering because of COVID. My dad is in poor health. And both my mom and dad just got divorced. I feel like my family needs me to help them make it through this time. My girlfriend has been working her ass off to get out of town for her whole high school college career, and I don't know if I'll want to leave town when I get back. I also hate being in the army, and I am tired of feeling like I am living out of a suitcase because of the travel. I want to start working on my dream career of being an art teacher, and it's next to impossible to get an art education degree while being in the army. The reason my parents split was because my dad could never compromise with anything. It was his way or no way and my mom got tired of it. I don't want to make the same mistake as my dad and lose the only person I've ever wanted kids with. We are trying to find a compromise that will work for both of us. But how can you compromise between two things that are black and white like where we settle down or whose career is more important? I don't want to push her away or make her resent me. And she doesn't want to do that to me. But something has to give here. Is this the sacrifice part of marriage that I always hear? People talk about. Slow down. Haas. Yeah. You've been acquainted a long time but you're long distance and only a couple months under your belt and you're both especially her really young. Both of you are going to change quite a bit in the next five or six years. Rushing into a marriage like this is a common thread in problem marriages in this sub. To your question. Someone posted something really wise a few months back. With compromise. You both lose. As a couple. You must collaborate on the best possible outcome. Ever since. I never prioritize compromise in a relationship. Only collaboration. This makes a lot of sense. Before this issue we both took that approach with everything. We never felt like the other was actually losing anything. We felt like we were building. In all the conversations we have pertaining to this subject it's like tug of war until somebody gives a little. And then it goes back into a discussion and what ground one side has gained is lost in the other direction. We have been together for a couple months this time around, but we have a very long friendship and previous relationship behind us. And I think that is actually working against us here. We both have it set that we are perfect for each other. And in every other aspect we really are. We are on the same wavelength on every other topic except this one. And I think we are just expecting it to work itself out. The only reason we would absolutely have to get married is if I stay in. Because dating in the army is an unreal strain in good times. And impossible in the worst. Which may be part of it. Who knows? Marriage isn't a much better story from what I see based on what I am seeing my buddies go through. Third story. I female 31 a breakup with my partner male 32 of 9 years. We started dating in college after a failed friends with benefits situation. We've done long distance and moved in together shortly after I moved to a major city by his parents home to begin graduate school for my PhD. We've had our ups and downs. But I am starting to feel like our incompatibilities are too big to patch up and we want different things out of life. As I finish my PhD. I am just ready to move on and begin my life marriage kids. Etc. And that seems out of reach with him for a few reasons. Here are some of the major points. 
We moved so that I could complete my residency for the final leg of my PhD. He hadn't had a job for at least six months before we moved. And six months and he still hasn't found a job, and I doubt he's looking. To get some extra income. Rather than tackling things together he once again returned to work for his parents six hours away. He spends the weeks with them while I am alone and isolated during a pandemic I work in a hospital so I only go to work. The grocery store. And the apartment and I feel largely alone during a time when I need emotional support. Despite my needs. I feel like it's been a nine-year struggle of constantly having to help him look for a job. I am trying to launch my own career, and he still waits on me to write his cover letters and resume. He spends the day playing Warframe and smoking pot. He cooks sometimes, but leaves the kitchen a mess and expects me to clean up the dishes while I am also trying to finish my dissertation after work. He's mostly on his phone, and I find myself starved for some quality time. And even when we do spend time together he doesn't seem present at all. I want to go out. Engage with the world. And I feel guilty for leaving him behind because he doesn't want to do anything else but play video games. Watch movies. And smoke weed. When I found out I got my postdoc position he said I was lucky it worked out that way so we wouldn't have to move again. He almost seemed resentful, and there was no congratulations. He stopped telling me he loves me, and even went so far as to say he doesn't see a future with me this is the nail in the coffin given I've been very explicit, I want to start working toward building a future and family. Which I feel I need to delay to accommodate his need to find himself. His parents think I am unhelpful, and have asked if they need to come get him to move him out. This hurts the most as I consider myself a patient. Kind person, but I simply cannot give more of myself to help him find a job and get on his feet. I've tried to communicate with him for plans to move closer to his family once my residency is over, but my career options are much more limited there. When he wants X. He just pulls out his boner, and when I say I am not in the mood because I need to be stimulated a little he puts it away. Goes to the bathroom. And watches lewd materials to help himself. Then if I am in the mood later. He's already gratified and doesn't want to engage. Then he complains that I don't initiate intimacy. He refuses to help himself. The mention of going to therapy gets him immediately defensive. He says he doesn't trust therapists and he hasn't even seen a doctor in years. Since he doesn't have health insurance because of his lack of a job. I know that love sometimes is a choice and that you have to weather the downs together. But I just don't see him as my person to do this with anymore. I almost feel ready to date again to find someone since I am so tired of managing my own struggles and those of the larger world. Read anything that doesn't involve him. Feeling completely alone. I am largely independent and can see the life that I want. And I feel like he's holding me back from it. I just wanted to gather some different perspectives to see if there's something I am missing. Too long didn't read. I am looking for advice insight into my female 30 situation with my partner male 32 of 9 years because I want to push forward in life and my career. But I feel like we're on wildly different pages since he's unemployed. Lives with his family for the most part despite our shared living space. And our very different lifestyles. So. Kind people have read it. What thoughts or advice do you have? If you are looking for validation of your choice to leave him then you have that validation from me. Thank you. I think this is exactly what I needed. It sounds like he's complacent. He's realized he can get away with doing the bare minimum to maintain the relationship and has taken advantage of the fact that you're too busy and career focused to give him a harder push. He gets to play video games and smoke weed all day while you support him. It sounds like you need to have the step up or I need to move on talk. If you want different things then it is perfectly fine to go your separate ways and in this case I highly suggest you just cut your losses. You've given up enough already. That last sentence hit me hard. Thank you for your honesty. Honestly. I have tried the step up talk, but he seems completely in his own bad way to be able to crawl out, and I can't give any more to pull him out. Hit like. If you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing to our channel.